Death will be optional by 2045, says Massachusetts Institute of Technology genetic scientist Josh Codiaro and David Wood. They have co-authored a book, Death of the Death. Hi, this is Sajeev Nair, serial entrepreneur and peak performance coach. I am more excited to introduce myself as a wellness evangelist and a biohacker. Average life expectancy is increasing every single day globally. In India, the average life expectancy in 80s was around 40 to 45 and it became 60 in 2000. And right now, when we are approaching 2020, the average life expectancy in India is around 70. Now, the projection is that by 2025, the average life expectancy in India will be 75. That means one out of three will be living more than 100 years. This is quite exciting, but at the same time, there are lots of questions around this statement. How you are going to live those 100 years or more? Whether you're going to live longer and die shorter, or you're going to live shorter and die longer. As you know, nowadays, many people are contracted with some disease like diabetes or hypertension at the age of 40 or even below 40, and still they continue living till the age of 80 or 90. So in this case, they were living shorter and dying longer. Just imagine a situation where you can live longer up to the age of 85 or 90 and then die during a period of two to three years. That would be great. That is what we all should be thinking right now at this point of time when the average life expectancy is increasing. That means the longevity is uh, something which we can look forward in our life. Let's think about the possibility of living longer and dying shorter. Or rather, I would love to challenge you to think of possibility of living longer and growing younger. Is that possible? With the advent of artificial intelligence and genetics, things are completely changing. The segment which is undergoing massive level of positive disruption right now in the world is medical science. In fact, in one of my earlier videos, which is on the Future Trend series, I had mentioned about the kinds of disruptions and the kind of changes which are happening right now in the medical science. During my research on thought process reengineering, which we call it as TPR, based on neuroscience, my intention was to uh, make neuroscience so simple that everybody can apply those principles on their day-to-day -day life and make life much better. In fact, we know that brain is the most complicated and sophisticated or most uh, complex equipment right now available in the world, in the universe. But if you buy a refrigerator, if you buy a laptop, you have an operating manual. But for your brain, the most sophisticated and the most complex equipment, you don't have an operating manual. We don't know how to operate our brain. So the objective of TPR research was to create an operating manual for your brain so that each and every person can achieve peak levels of performance in whichever area they work. When I started applying the techniques of thought process reengineering, for helping people to achieve peak levels of performance, I realized the significance of another thing, which is called physiology. I realized that it's not just the psychology which makes significant changes in people's life, it is their physiology. In fact, I got convinced that your physiology changed your psychology. Or rather, I would scientifically say that your physiology changed your neurochemistry. I worked on myself and I changed my physiology. The way I walk, the way I sit, the kind of food I eat, when I eat, the bed timing so that, you know, I identify the correct, correct bed timing for me so that I can wake up so fresh in the morning. In fact, I did a biohack on myself. It made remarkable difference in my energy, my focus, my performance levels. In fact, I could see that I was creating a better version of myself. Even I could experience changes in my appearance. The good news is that anybody can biohack his physiology and also psychology by taking the right scientific steps. Let me share with you one simple hack which I use in my program Rise Up, which is designed based on thought process reengineering. You all must have seen or those people who have attended the program must have experienced. I always make people jump on their toe during the program. Do you know what does it mean? It is actually a biohack. This is called lymphatic drain. You have a lymphatic system along with your circulatory system. The circulatory system has got a pump which is called your heart. But your lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. What does this lymphatic system do? This lymphatic system drains all the fluid from your tissues and keeps a balance of the fluid between the blood and the tissues. So when this is being drained, 
your toxins and different kinds of waste stages are being drained out. So lymphatic drain is very, very important. When you are actually jumping, what you are doing is that you are actually activating the lymphatic drain. Because as I told you, the circulatory system has got a pump. The lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. The lymphatic drain will happen only when your muscular movements happen. That has been scientifically proven that when you are actually jumping on the toe, you are bouncing yourself. That is the time you create the maximum amount of lymphatic drain. And as a result, when you are doing this exercise, your toxins will be drained and you will gain huge level of energy and you can actually continue whatever you're doing for hours together. So there are so many such simple biohacks which you can apply in your life. In the coming videos, I'm going to come out with such tips so that you can actually create a better version of yourself. See you next time.